Today we're going to look at different ways of using buttons in programs using flow code and how we can use buttons to perform different tasks and make buttons which work in different ways. I've started off here just with a very simple program and all it does is when I press any one of these buttons it's just going to make a counter go up by one and you can see if I press it a number of times it makes it go up a number of times and it's coming down on the LCD screen here at the bottom. And the way it works is on the in the program itself. I'll slow this down so we can see it working a little bit. Uh, when I press a button, the program starts. It starts at the screen. I've got a wait pressed component macro here, which allows the program to stop until I press a button. It's not always the best op uh, option, but it works fine for this simple program here. And whenever I press a button, it's saving it to this button variable here. We don't actually use that in this program at the moment, but we might use it later on, and it's something good to have. I've also got a count variable. This starts at zero, and it goes up by one each time when it comes to this point. So I'll press a button, and it waits until I re release it. If I didn't have that section in there, it would keep going round and round and round and round. When I release it, it increases the count by one, puts the cursor to the initial point here again, and goes back round. I'll quickly show you what would happen if it didn't have this weight released in. So if I don't have the weight released in, and I press the button, the It does help if I slow it down again. When I press the button, it'll go up by quite large amounts because it'll just loop round and round and round and round the program. So if I slow it down a little bit, you can see the program's going round and round as I hold on the button. And because this is going to be happening at an incredibly fast speed when it's, the computer's running at the full speed, then it will be too fast for you to handle. So we'll put that weight release back into the program. There we go. And that's quite useful. It's, it's good to have just something where it's registering a number of clicks. And there will be some cases where you'll use that in an actual program, but that's not really something which is particularly useful. What I want to add in is I want to change this into a, a program where the button is a start-stop button. So it's going to be start a timer. The timer will count up. And I'll press a button, it'll start a timer, and I'll press the button again, and it'll stop the timer. I've got a timer. First of all, I'm going to put in a delay. I'll just put in one second for now, so it'll be counting up in seconds. I'm also going to want a variable, which is going to say whether the timer's timer has started. So I'm going to call it timer active, and I'll start at zero. And where the timer is printing the value and counting on, I'm going to put that into a decision. And it's only going to be going into the yes if I have timer active equals one. So all of this goes into the decision there. And that's quite useful. It's, it's going around. I might just take this one second out for now. Uh, we'll come back to why that's going to be out in, in a moment. But we're going to go with this. And at the moment, it's going to do pretty much, actually it won't be doing anything because as you can see, the timer, it's skipping this decision. It's going down this no route here rather than going down the yes route. And it's looping back around when I press a button. So it's not actually doing anything to the timer. So we need to have something which is going to change that and how it's working. The next thing I want to do is change this weight press into a get number, and that's because I don't want it to uh, stop every time I get to this point in the program. When the time is going, I don't want it to be stopping, I just want it to be registering if I'm pressing a button or not. So I've changed it to a get number, and you can see this will just loop round and round and round. Uh, normally it'll just loop round and round and round. If I hold the button, It'll stop at this point until I release the button again. So it stops here when I when I hold the button down. And that's fine because I'll want it to wait when I'm holding the button in a moment. So we'll stop that again. And I want it to be registering whatever I'm pressing at this get number. So we'll just do a little bit of investigation to see how this works. I want to copy this for now for debugging purposes. And I'm going to say I'm going to print button instead of count. So when it's just going around normally, it's 
given a value of 255, which in binary is going to be 11111111. That's eight ones. If I press one of the buttons, you can see that's stop the weight release. I'm pressing the button seven, and it's going to come around and it's going to print the number. Seven. You can see it's, it's just doing it here on that first digit because I'm not clearing that line. Do this one, it's going to turn it into a zero. Just like that. So if I'm not pressing any buttons, it's going to give me 255. And to get this time active to start, what I want to do, I'm going to delete these out again, and I'm going to have a decision. And I'm going to say if uh, button doesn't equal 255. So this is saying if I'm pressing any of those buttons. If I wanted to be a specific button, I could say if button equals 1, 2, 3, or something like that. But I'm going to say if it doesn't equal 255. So it's saying if I'm pressing any button at all. And I'm going to change timer active to a binary number, a bool in this case. And in here, I'm just going to say timer active equals not timer active. So it's going to equal whichever value it's not at the moment. So if it's a zero, it becomes a one. If it's a one, it becomes a zero. And we'll see how that works. So it's going to be looping around normally. It's going to have timer active as zero, so it's not going to be counting upwards. And then if I press a button, it stopped at the weight released. And when I let go, it changes timer active to one. So it goes around this timing circuit here. And it's starting to count up in time. And that's quite useful. I'll see if it stops. So I'm holding down the button three. Stops at the weight released. When I let go, it stopped counting. So it's staying at four now. As it goes. We'll have a quick look at what happens if I speed this up. So it's sped up. Uh, it stopped showing on, on what's happening on the screen. If I press the button three and then I let go again, it's going to start counting. And it doesn't have to be the button three. If I do the same with the button seven and I let go, you can see it stopped counting. So the timer starts. And then it stops again, which is pretty useful. You can see how you can use this for something like a stopwatch or a timer. You can get it to count down instead of counting upwards. Instead of having count equals count plus one, you can have count equals count minus one. And you can do some good stuff with that. The button's not fantastic, though, because if I just tap the buttons, as you can see here, it's not really doing anything. And that's because most of the time, the, uh, the program spends its time waiting for this delay to, to finish. So it's only checking if I'm pressing a button once for once every second. That's only for an absolute fraction of a second. So I've got to hold the button down a little bit to get the start. And you've actually got to hold it down by quite a way. So hold it down, let go, and it starts up again. And then even here, if I'm just tapping these buttons, it's not going to work very often. The odd chance it will work, uh, it's worked there. But often, when you're pressing the buttons, it won't restart the timer, you got to hold it for a little bit and then let go. So we want it to count up every second, but we want it to delay by, we want, to, we want it to check more than once a second, but we want the full delay to last a second. So a little bit of a question of what we can do about this. And for me, the best way to do it is we can drop this to 100 milliseconds. So that's going to be a tenth of a second. I'm going to use this in the program up the top. And we're going to put all of this into a loop at the top. And I'm going to use a loop count for this. And it's going to loop 10 times. So we'll put all of these sections into this loop. And what this means is it's going to loop 10 times every second. And once every second, it'll go through this timer loop here. If the timer's active, it'll count up by one. If it's not active, it'll count, it won't do anything. And I think 100 milliseconds works quite well, just so you can register a quick tap. So we'll see how that works. 
So if I press it once, the timer starts. And I press it again, and it stopped. Press it, and it starts. Press it, and it stops. And if I slow that down a little bit, we can see how it's working. It's going around this loop 10 times. Probably caught in the middle of a uh, loop of 10 here. And then once every 10, it's going to be going through the full loop. There we go. So you can sort of just jump through that full loop there. And it just means you get a much more responsive button. It's quite a simple addition to the program, but it's quite good. Uh, if you're doing this in some kind of exam then, or for an assessed work, then you'll be able to show off this little bit of code. And I think it's quite useful. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something. If you have, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe because we do appreciate that. And I hope to see you again soon.